Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, March 14th, 2024, Pi Day. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Matt Giovanisi from Brew Cabin, Josh Secor from Gambit Brewing Company, and I formulate a recipe for a Saison that Matt eventually wants to age with some bugs. We also taste my wacky Fresca Chandler concept. If you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basicbrewing. And many thanks to everybody who is helping out in that way. If you go to patreon.com slash basicbrewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Financial supporters have already seen the video episode I'm planning to post on Friday. It's the one where Steve Wilkes and I taste the veneer mead kit that I got from Gronfeld.com. I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. Super simple to make and deliciously drinkable. Steve liked it, too. Many thanks to uh, the new Patreon members who have signed up recently. As I've said, your support is even more important these days. Uh, Desiree and Dave of High Gravity have announced that March 30th will be their last day in business after serving the home and craft brewing communities for 20 years. Uh, This means, however, that they're having a clearance sale on HighGravityBrew.com with big discounts on a lot of stuff. I went there yesterday and got ingredients for my last batch of beer uh, that I will brew from their ingredients, which is incredibly sad. I also picked up a couple of little wine kits. uh, And if you like making wine at home, you should head over to HighGravityBrew.com to pick up a deal. A lot of beer ingredients are on sale there, too. Uh, So help them out uh, as they're closing down the shop. Uh, We love Desiree and Dave. We're planning to go over and see them uh, before the month is out. They're having a party on the 23rd of the month. Um, Again, many thanks to to them and to everybody at High Gravity because it's a family. They've got family members uh, and other folks working there with them at the store. So it's not just them uh, that are changing gears in life. But we thank them for their generous support and, of course, their friendship, which will continue. Um, You may remember a few episodes back that I challenged Matt Giovannisi of Brew Cabin and Swim University and Josh Secor from Gambit Brewing in St. Paul, Minnesota, to help me formulate a recipe that would blend well with Fresca. (laughs) We, We called our proposed concoction a Chandler, a hybrid of Shandy and a Rattler. Uh, Well, this week, we give the Chandler a taste. We also taste an incredible Saison from Josh and Gambit and formulate a Saison recipe for Matt to take on. Josh Secor of Gambit Brewing in St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Well, thanks for having me back. And Matt Juvenisi of Brew Cabin, welcome back. Thanks for having me again. I switched the order there. I called an audible. Good. Good. (laughs) We're going to taste a, a beer that I brewed uh, as 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 per our our past session, our recipe development session. Uh, and then, Matt, you want to uh, brew a beer. So we're going to formulate a recipe for you. And then we're going to taste a beer from Josh and Gambit Brewing. So we got a lot on the uh, on the schedule today. And mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm just coming off of a you know a Benadryl uh, dose, so uh, it should be a fun show. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get wild. Your sinuses right out. <laughs> Who Great knows? Food's good for you, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. You uh, mix that with Advil. <laughs> you shouldn't mix mix it with Stratton, uh, Stratton's Dorothy. Str- no, uh, Statins. You shouldn't uh, mix. Statins. Uh, yeah. So yeah, don't 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 eat grapefruit in Staten Island. That's good. <laughs> Boy, we're all over. We're all over the road already. Woo! I'm going to need y'all's help uh, to to keep on task today. Okay, so so the last time we got together, I I challenged us to come up with a recipe for something that we wound up calling a a group grapefruit soda or a Fresca Chandler, uh, which is a combination of a Shandy and a Rattler. And I thought, oh, aren't we so clever? We've come up with this new name for this new thing. And of course, I googled Chandler. And there's like three or four commercial examples out there already. People already do, <laughs> already doing the thing. Are they are they all just called Chandler Bing? No, <laughs> although that was a reference. <laughs> <laughs> so there so there are lots of Chandlers out there already, and and we can't uh, we can't claim you know a copyright, I guess. But but hopefully it'll be a good beer anyway. 
so you guys have got this pale ale that I made to mix with the the, the fresca. So why don't y'all open uh, those and pour yourself half a glass and take a taste, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I'll talk about the recipe while we uh, while we do that. So this is a five gallon or nineteen liter batch, and this is an extract batch, a fifteen minute boil extract batch. So I started with five gallons or nineteen liters of water, and into that I added six pounds or two point seven kilograms of Pilsen light dry malt extract. Um, oh, before I did that, I steeped in the water as it was coming up to a set temperature of one hundred and fifty degrees. One pound or 450 grams of 60 Lovabon crystal and one pound or 450 grams of flaked wheat. And it only took about 15 minutes for my high gravity system to come up to 150 degrees, but I just held it there for an additional uh, 15 minutes just to get the, you know, the good stuff out of the steeping grains. I took out those steeping grains, added the six pounds or 2.7 kilograms of light dry malt extract, and I brought it up to a boil. Did a 15-minute boil. At the beginning of that 15-minute boil, I added 2.5 ounces or 71 grams of Cascade at 5% alpha acid. Uh, Again, a 15-minute boil. Then uh, at the end of that 15 minutes, I shut off the heat. I added the other half an ounce of Cascade uh, along with 1 ounce or 28 grams of Centennial and 1 ounce of Simcoe for a 10-minute hop stand. Then I chilled, and I, I... racked it into the fermenter, and I discovered that I was down to four, about four gallons and a quart in the fermenter. Uh, and my gravity at that point was 1072. So what I did mm. was I, I topped up to six, uh, six gallons in the fermenter with drinking water or spring water. And I calculated that that brought my gravity down to 1051, which is, you know, right at where we were thinking. So I fermented with a uh, L25 Huga, which is a lager yeast, but I fermented it at ale temperature. And within seven days, I was able to rack it into the keg. <laughs> it went it went real quick. So the starting mm. gravity was 1051, final gravity 1012 for an ABV of 5.1% and 174 calories. Uh, the brew day from turning on the power to turning off the chiller was an hour and a half. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> there is an advantage to <laughs> uh, to your extract uh, beers. Now, that, that doesn't uh, count me setting up the equipment and cleaning the equipment at, at the end. But, you know, uh, 90 minutes for a brew day is pretty good. So mm-hmm. uh, there was another twist. Uh, I had company over, uh, and I told them where the kegerator was. And I think somebody left the door open slightly on the kegerator. Uh, because the next day I went to pull a pint, and it was really I, – it was hard to, for me to get beer from either of my two kegs. And I looked, and there was, like, frost on the outside of the keg where the beer level was. No. So I think that the compressor was, like, going, like, all night long, and it, like, nearly froze the beer. <laughs> mm-hmm. So And it was highly overcarbonated after it, after it uh, – thawed out because, you know, you you get more carbonation into a solution at colder temperatures. So it took me a couple of days to kind of even that out. So, you know, if the ba- if the beer is badly carbonated, that's, you know, that's my, my not being able to fix that situation. So anyway, with that caveat, cheers, guys. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll take a sip here cheers. and uh, see what Josh, since I introduced you first, what do you think of the of, of the little beer? I actually like it. It's a, uh, it's a super, it's it, what it now is kind of an old school pale ale mm-hmm. uh, with the, with the C60 and stuff. Um, but I, I like it. All the trials that it went through it, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and then a, a trip to Wisconsin from Arkansas, it, it came out all right. Oh, and mm-hmm. I, I also put a tincture of, uh, I forgot to put the grapefruit peel at the uh, flame out. So I made a tincture oh, with, sure. with half a cup of vodka with the the peel from two uh, uh, red grapefruits. So um, uh, anyway, so there there may be a little bit of uh, grapefruit aroma in there. I can't tell because my nose is all stopped up. Uh, but that's if there is, it's because of that tincture. Uh, 
I think it, I mean, um, I don't get a ton of it, but. When I, I uh, we have a, a, a fresca, I have it opened. When I smell the fresca as my grapefruit control, <laughs> I can smell the same grapefruit oh. aroma in the beer. Oh. It's more subtle. And I get like a, and I don't know if this is from the 60, but I get a caramel vibe as well. Mm -hmm. Like even in the aroma. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that too, for sure. And I, I, I would assume I think that's like you, the C60. Yeah. And then the, um, it's got good bitterness. I, I think you're right. It's uh, old school. Is it, is that, I, I don't know how, like, and I say old school, like 90s, mm -hmm. maybe late 90s. Yeah. I, that's what it's I would open. think. Like a Sierra Nevada pale ale or like. Yeah. Which yeah. is not a bad thing. I was hoping that the hops would pop a little more. And I think that if I had added, you know, doctored the, the water uh, with some gypsum, you know, to uh, at least, you know, to bring, you know, the, the minerality up a bit w with my water. It's just filtered tap water. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that that yeah. would help the, the hops pop a little more. Uh, yeah, I think I think old school is probably a good uh, a good description. Um you know, for instance, it pales in the in comparison to the the beer that you sent uh, most recently, Matt, <laughs> for our conversation on canning. Very different. Yeah, uh, very, very, very different. <laughs> but I had significantly fewer hops in this, uh, or less hops in this. Yeah, they they kind of maybe get hidden a little bit under the under the caramel, but maybe with a little bit of a cascade dry hop, this would, you know, it would yeah pop a little bit. And there's also flaked tweed in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the bitterness is on. It's it's not doesn't feel um, like it's not under hopped by any means. It's definitely hopped. It's definitely a pale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I like it actually. Well, good. It's a good. It's an easy drinking yeah. beer. Uh, I can tell mm -hmm. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just by itself. But the question mm -hmm. is, what will happen when we add some some. Uh, grapefruit soda and, and in this case specifically uh fresca to it so what i would recommend is you've got a half a glass there i would i would recommend that you pour like another quarter glass of like 50 percent of the be of the amount of beer of fresca in on top of the of the beer okay and and see what you think about that and, and steve and i already did this for the video but we haven't released it yet uh-huh you know, I've I've been drinking uh, grapefruit Lacroix for so long, for years and years and years, and then I I kind of had I started drinking. We had it for the wedding. I had Spindrift's version, mm. and just I just sipped a little bit of Fresca, and the amount of sugar I was not <laughs> expecting because it, it says soda water, but it is not soda water. It has got a ton of sugar in it. Well, it's yeah. zero calorie, so it's a it's a sweetener, but it's not sugar. Oh man, like yeah, what is it? It's aspartame? There's citric acid in here. Asper not so tame. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Apparently not. As Jeez. Asper wild. I mean, I guess I'm just I'm so <laughs> I'm I'm a little sensitive to sugar. So I can see where Matt's going. It smells like grapefruit now. <laughs> it does. I'm not sure what I think about it with Fresca. Now I'm a Fresca fan myself. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Now maybe maybe yeah. with you guys it might work with another better with another brand of 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 uh, soda maybe even another flavor of you know citrus soda. Let me let me see here. I think I have. <laughs> we just went to the grocery store this week and they had a really good deal on two liters of soda. So my thirteen year old like really went through the math and talked his mother into buying him two liters of soda. <laughs> so I have Starry, which I think is. Like Pepsi's Sprite or Seven Up. Yeah, didn't they change from something else to Starry? Yeah, it used to be PepsiCo's Starry is a lemon lime soda that replaced Sierra Mist in January oh, 2023. So now I'm double fisting Chandler's over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Somewhere. So what do you think? Does the Starry fare fare better than the than oh. the Fresca? I don't think it does. I like the grapefruit from the fresco for sure. It's I don't know if I'm crazy, but I feel like either either soda kind of brings out the bitterness more. So maybe it's a good thing that the uh, that the beer in this concept is is a little less sharp than I intended. I think so. Yeah, which it's kind of strange to me that you'd think putting something sweeter would not 
bring out the bitterness, but I feel like it does. Um, I just I just dumped mine, the fifty fifty version. Uh, it's too sweet for me. But let me I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing because I want more beer and less fresca. Like I want a kiss of fresca. <laughs> I want to. Yeah. Uh, better. <laughs> I'd, I prefer the beer. Honestly. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's good. I, I, I think I I think uh yeah I think I man. I think Fresca is not my favorite. <laughs> just as a just as a natural drink. Steve and I, by the way, on the video show, and it won't surprise, you know, our listeners and viewers, we liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course we've been accused of liking everything. Uh which is not true. Uh there are some things that we have made that we don't like, and people don't see those videos for a reason. <laughs> we don't make we tend not to make videos uh on the failures. Uh, but mm. we, but we kind of, maybe it was the day, uh, that, you know, that we, that we had it. Maybe we're both Fresca fans. Uh, yeah, I think I, I just want the beer personally and maybe like a, like a grapefruit, like, so, um, juice, you know, like an Italian soda. Mm. I think for me, it's the aspartame or that, 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 that taste of, uh, fake sugar, you know? Like like mm-hmm. diet coke sweetness that is like not hitting right with me as a as it's just a consumer. Okay, so it's a th- it's a thumbs down from Matt, Josh. What Josh? What do you think? I'm I'm indifferent to it. I would rather have the beer. A thumb sideways. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda yeah, but I wonder what it would be like with just like a wedge of grapefruit. Like oh, yeah, a lime and a Corona. Just like a squeeze of of fresh grapefruit might be. That better. would be great. Well, thanks, guys, for your honesty. That's all the time we have today. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry. And yeah, well, this will be, an... be published next week. Uh, I'm a, yeah, oh, I lost the tape. Where did they? <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it, it unraveled. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take the some file? more. Be- I'm gonna go take some more Benadryl and uh, have a lie down. <laughs> well, you didn't make the fresca. Yeah, that's true. No, the beer is nice. I like it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm so far ahead on recording episodes, and that makes me very happy. It's kind of a luxury for you know content uh, content creators to have episodes uh, you know ready and in the can. Um, well, this week Chris Colby and I recorded an episode formulating a, a recipe for a hoppy raw ale inspired by my conversation with Mika Leitinen. On the way right now to me as I speak is a package from Imperial Yeast. That has a packet or two of A37 Pog, which I intend to pitch into that hoppy raw ale. Pog is Ebergarden Kvike that is ready for the tropical lifestyle. At the higher temperatures of its uh, fermentation range, P- Imperial Pog produces a lot of tropical fruit aromas like pineapple and guava. And at the lower end, you get more delicate citrus, peach, and kiwi. Well, I plan to pitch at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or around 37 C. Uh, My porch isn't hot yet, so I'm not going to leave it outside, but I'm hoping that that initial warm pitching temp will get Pog rocking and rolling before the work cools down too much. And I know that those 200 billion cells in each packet of Imperial yeast will get the party started in a hurry. My stir plate is dusty because I don't use it anymore to make starters for moderate gravity five-gallon batches, and my airlocks are usually bubbling before bedtime. Now, I have a feeling that Pog... Is going to be working before supper time. <laughs> the Kvike stuff is incredible. Ask your local homebrew store about A37 Pog from Imperial Yeast. And check out all the dependable deliciousness at imperialyeast.com. That's imperialyeast.com. Well, shall we? Now, we want to talk. You want to do a, a, a I guess I sub- suggested doing a Saison. And I and I mm-hmm. volunteered to to go next. Uh, oh, you did. But well, I said if I I could go next if 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 you want me to, but I don't oh, know. I... After you had my Fresca Chandler, you might not want me to. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, you said you've been you, you've been itching to to do a a, a saison. Yes, I uh, I had a mishap. I talk I I talked to you about it privately, and I will I will. I will tell the listeners if you want me to 
the what went wrong, a homebrewing mistake. Oh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's good enough for the uh, end of the year special. It's not a disaster, <laughs> but we'll be the I, judge of that. Well, okay. So uh, last year, I decided that I wanted to start a mixed fermentation program in my own home, and I brewed ten gallons of a general. Saison, I called it a like mixed fermentation base beer, which I used Saison yeast. And I pitched um, Brett, a, a strain of Brett and a strain of lact- lactobacillus. And so those were the strains. I co pitched everything. I put it into a carboy. I dropped it into my basement, well, actually, two carboys because I made 10 gallons. Dropped those carboys into my basement and let them ferment from about April until about October. And in October, and I was very good at like not tasting and checking because I didn't want to introduce any oxygen and, you know, cause any sort of, uh, I think it's acetobacter, uh, you know, or any uh, vinegary like taste to the beer. And so I, when I went to go taste it, I ended up in the meantime, to, to be clear, in May, I made another 10 gallons. And I split that into two batches, and I did very similar things where I pitched uh, the same saison yeast, but I pitched different bugs. So I had 20 gallons or four separate carboys of these four different kind of beers in the basement for about six to eight months. And I tasted every one of them, and they were disgusting, horrible, (laughs) horrible, disgusting. Oh, no. And I – couldn't figure out i'm like why it tasted so incredibly bitter like medicinal bitterness oh you know like probably like i shouldn't have been drinking it i was a little nervous (laughs) and i'm like what did i do wrong and then i don't know what i what made me think of this but i was like and i had read american sour beers right before doing this project and i'd read it front back to you know from the beginning to the end and i was like all right i have the confidence now i'm going to do this thing well, I made one crucial error. I missed one crucial step in the process, and I feel like such an idiot because I've been homebrewing for a very long time, and I should have known that I made this mistake. Uh, but I guess I thought something was different with sour beer, so I co-pitched everything and left that to ferment for eight months, meaning that I left the beers on the yeast cake uh, oh. with the uh, with the regular yeast you know the saccharomyces yeast for 8 months and it and i and it's autolysis i believe is the um right. off flavor that yeah. i got right and so i went i just went back in the book and i'm like wow there it's it's listed there as a step <laughs> in every single process and i completely <laughs> missed it <laughs> and then didn't even think to be like well, yeah, I mean, like, I know the, I know that, I know that that's a problem. I know you shouldn't do that. Like, if I really think about it, I'm like, but I didn't even, I guess because I was like, oh, I'm learning something new. I guess I'll just trust. They say co-pitch. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. And my, in my head, I thought, well, if I'm co-pitching and, you know, I let it ferment for seven days, but then I rack it off into a secondary, but then aren't you racking off it from the bugs? But that's not how it works. So there's still going to be, there's still going to be some in there. Uh, to keep, right. keep working, you would you would think. That's apparently, yes, of course. So, uh, yeah, I had to dump 20 gallons of beer down the drain mm. because it was disgusting. That hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that was a whole year of, like, waiting for it, getting excited about it, and then just going, what the heck? <laughs> how did I – I was like, how did I mess up all four? Uh, so I want to redeem myself in 2024 and and <laughs> – <laughs> do it again. And I have a <laughs> I have a process uh where I will ferment clean and then rack off into secondary, into carboys, pitch my bugs, store it in my basement for four to six months, bottle, and you know, have like a wild Saison or a or a maybe a true mm-hmm. farmhouse Saison. Well let, let me pitch an idea. as your what if you uh brew the beer you do, mm-hmm. you know, the the co fermentation or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. and then as you're racking off for long term storage with more funky stuff, what if you segment uh, yeah. a, a bit off 
and package it or, you know, stabilize, condition it as normal, package it. Yep. And then we like taste that. Love that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, in, in four to six months or wherever, uh, you know, maybe we even save one of the one of the ones that, you know, you send us to begin with. Yeah, the clean and, one. And the clean one. And then compare that to uh, the aged one. I'm down with that idea. I love that idea. That sounds great. That way we don't have to wait six months to have another show is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Says the producer of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Content creator. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 gotta that's feed good the producing beast. right there. Got to feed the beast. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea, though. I like it cool. a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, reading the the section of this uh, Phil Markowski book, Farmhouse Ales, Culture and Craftsmanship in the Belgian Tradition. Uh, you know, it's on the chapter of Brewing Saison, just a simple, you know, farmhouse Saison beer. Uh, it sounds like it's it's pretty easy to put together and pretty simple and, you know, a nice, um, delicious uh, sort of basic uh beer with some interesting character uh which you know we could we could construct with this recipe but then you could you could franken franken beer it you know you can add some more bugs and and you know cellar it for a longer time and mm-hmm. turn it into something that is you know more complex you know more interesting more even challenging to yeah uh to the to the uh, to the sipper yeah so what I'll do is I'll make the beer I will ferment it clean with just Saison yeast. Mm. I will bottle condition off of that, a, hand, a handful of bottles. I will take the rest of that beer. I will I will split it into carboys. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to make 10 gallons, so I'll split it into two different carboys, and I'll pitch two different mixtures of bugs so that we, we have even more to taste mm. in the future. And we'll just say, hey, you know, if this is a – this type of Britannomyces, this type of Lactobacillus, and then, you know, the other one will be different, and it'll be the same base beer. And, yeah, we can either keep one and then compare them later or, you know, do the show, drink one, and go, okay, that was fine, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and then, uh, it's not as bad as that damn Fresca thing. <laughs> yeah, remember that? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, do uh, – yeah, and then do the uh, the – the bread it one later. So before we get into the talking about your recipe, we mm-hmm. have uh, cans of something from Gambit Brewing Company in St. Paul, Minnesota. Josh, what do we got here that I'm about to crack open? So this is uh, what we call Zizu, uh, French farmhouse ale. And it's, I really, lo- I mean, I've always loved brewing Saisons and the farmhouse beers. This is just a clean one. There's no bugs or anything in it. Um, that's something eventually I would like to dabble with at Gambit. But it kind of, like, the recipe for this beer is super simple. But it, like, Saison mm. yeast gives you such cool characters that you just, you'd have to work to get this much differing flavor in a beer with, you know, if you were trying to add stuff to, say, like, a, a beer fermented with Chico to get this kind of, flavor profile so i right. think they're super fun beers it's it's a very light light colored beer it's very clear my nose isn't as i said before my nose isn't working real well as if it ever does but am i getting some farmhouse funkiness on the on the nose a little bit of interesting uh yeast character i think i think so for sure yeah mm-hmm. um to me this this uh yeast or this beer in general with this grain bill it, it gives you kind of a lot of citrus, a little bit of that like fresh hay, um, a little bit of like red apple maybe. And then the hops I use in this is a newer variety uh, from France called Bar Bruge hmm. mm-hmm. that I really, I really liked. Um, they almost reminded me of like strawberry and raspberry kind of character. I'd really like to do a, a an IPA with these and just see at super high concentrations, kind of what you would, yeah. what you'd get out of them. Wow. Um, can you talk a little bit about the malt bill? Yeah, for sure. It's simple. This is just like a simple rye Saison grain bill. So it's like mm. 82% uh, Pilsner, uh, 16% malted rye, and then just a little bit, uh, like 2% of honey malt. Mm. 
just for that little bit more golden color and a, a little bit of background kind of honey sweetness. Boy, the the flavor is just amazing. It's yeah, it's really really good. It's it's super spicy. Are there are there spices in the beer? No, that's all that's all yeast driven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Taxi. And and um, was it the the it's not Baton Rouge, right? It's what is it? Barb Rouge. Barb Rouge. Is that when is that just a like a boil edition, or is there any late editions in that? No, it's just a little bit at like 60 minutes and then yep. some at five minutes. So it's wow. t- like 30, 30, 30, 32 IBUs total. Okay. So just a little bit at the beginning for a, just a little bit of bitterness and then quite a bit bigger hit at five minutes just to try and, you know, let some of that hop come through. Mm-hmm. Wow. And this is a big, this is a big saison at 6.7%. It's, it's yeah. pretty big, yeah. but it does, it's not gloppy at all. It, it, for it's must've fermented fairly dry it did, yeah. I think it went down to like ten oh eight, ten oh six, somewhere oh, in there. Nice, nice. And no additional sugar. Nope. Wow, this is all. Malt, so. Yeah. And what temperature did you ferment at? I want to say seventy four, seventy six. Yeah. Did you just let it go? Like no, no chiller involved. I kept it. I kept it capped for the few first like three days. It capped at like seventy six, and then I let it run after that and it probably all told maybe made it up to like 80 degrees there's a ton of spice uh yeah and when i say spice and i don't mean heat obviously uh but clove and maybe coriander mm-hmm. um but it's incredible that that's all from the mm-hmm. yeast it, uh, is, it really is and it's it's a fun one for people to drink at the tap room just because i mean essentially it's it's not anything that much different than some of the lagers we do that it's a super simple grain bill. Yeah. But just changing that strain of yeast makes it a completely different animal. Did you say the strain? It's uh, one called uh, Lagrange from a company called AEB out of Denmark. Oh, they do all dry yeast that I've really been happy with at Gambit. So it's a, it's a cool one. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing beer. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, and, and like you referred to, it's probably the recipe itself is probably deceptively simple. Yeah, there's really nothing to it. The, the, I, I've always liked uh, rye in saisons, and and it just I think mm. maybe that gives you a little bit of that spiciness too. Is the the that portion of rye malt that's that's mm-hmm. in there? Wow, it's like cinnamon. I mean, you know, this beer has warmed up a little bit since we've been talking. Uh, uh, and it just got out of the UPS truck this morning, but uh, <laughs> that probably helped. Uh, but there's like cinnamon and clove and, you know, I'm not saying it's a pumpkin spice beer, uh, but the level of spice that's in it is, you know, it's about the level of, of you know, pantry spices as you would think in a in a well-designed pumpkin spice beer. Uh, it's just yeah, it's uh, yeah. just incredible that it came from just from the yeast. Well, and I, and I think you know if you put on a label or told somebody like, "Hey, I spiced this with seventeen secret spices." Yeah, I don't think anybody would argue. Yeah, yeah. You're like, uh huh, sure. Yeah, I'd be saying, "How did you get that spice character to remain in the beer?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's <Yeah>. your technique? <laughs> wow. Well, that's like a heck of a beer to to be inspired by, Matt. Uh, so, not saying you have to equal this, but what? <laughs> let's let's open up the app and and get designing uh, yours. Which direction do you, I mean? In reading the book, uh, Farmhouse Ales, mm-hmm. the malt bill can be as simple as Pilsner malt. I mean, if yeah. you, if you want to stay that simple, uh, but you know, just small additions. Small percentages of additions uh, can bring some either, you know, different colors into the beer or different, you know, flavor characteristics. So how 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 are you feeling? How, how do you want to go? Which direction? Well, the, the beer that I made last year uh, was pretty simple. It was just Pilsner malt, but it was half Pilsner malt and half white wheat malt. Oh. Uh, and then I also added... A little bit, a little, because I have a ton of it. Unfortunately, um, a little bit of carapils or dextrin malt, 
And that was mainly the my reason for adding that was one to get rid of it, and two, <laughs> so that the Britannomyces had something to munch on right. sort of later down the road. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, so that was you know, and I just added uh, roughly ten percent, which is a lot of of carrot pills, but it was uh, yeah. So it was basically fit like you could say fifty fifty Pilsner to wheat, uh, not flaked adjuncts because that would be kind of a mess, I think. Um, and I'll tell you that the beers. Are were clear when I when I uh, when I dumped them. Oh, so <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, I you know, and I I like the idea of like an American kind of American wheat ale. I I like the idea of honey malt. I like the idea of rye. I've never I don't I don't want to say I've never used rye, but I don't think I've ever used rye before. Hmm. But I'm worried about the rye playing with the lacto lacto and uh brett later on mm. i don't know if i should be worried about that but the any sort of spice level i'd like to keep uh keep maybe keep keep low lower sure. uh and go for more of a fruit kind of vibe mm -hmm. it, it's hard to put you know limitations or specifications on the style quote unquote style because sure you know that it's it's meant to come from the region you know, and every farmer might have different recipes because every farmer might have different ingredients. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if 50, 50, according to the book, uh, seems, seems high on the, on the wheat, uh, side of things, but it's your beer, you know, it's an, it's a, now an American Saison. Uh, yep. and so, you know, f feel free to do what you do what you want. Uh, what do you think though? I don't know. I made a Fresca beer. <laughs> <laughs> so more grapefruit, you're saying. You, you're asking me? <laughs> well, that's the bonus. You can always pour Fresca in it. That's true. <laughs> that's right. I think, you get, I, mean, I think you could get away with 50% wheat. Yeah, I don't, yeah do what I you think want. it's going to be detrimental by any means. No. I, yeah, I'd say go for it. Well, uh, okay. What about hops then? Because I feel like, and I was kind of going more on a. Um, I didn't read the farmhouse book. I read the Wild Brews book to develop this, and I think that's more of in the lambic category, which I think is why I went so high with wheat. Mm -hmm. um, and then with uh, and 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 keeping with that theme, I went with a very low bitterness. So yeah. I went eighteen IBUs of saws, but I don't know if we could play with that at all. I think you sure could. Yeah, I mean, there's some. Um... Yeah, bittering hops, twenty to twenty-five IBUs. Um, so the classic, mm -hmm. the sample recipe, you know, the the saison classic version, you know, bittering hops, twenty to twenty-five IBUs, su suggested variety EKG, um, a late hop addition, last fifteen twenty minutes of the boil, um, you know, two and a half ounces, or or twelve twelve grams per five gallons of uh, EKG or Styrian Goldings. So you know the classic recipe is of you know classic hops of the of the region or thereabouts but again you know this is your if we're doing american either your your beer <laughs> you can yeah. you can do what you want um what you know i guess the yeast if you're going to use a, a yeast as expressive as this one um you know what hop character do you think plays well with you you would think that you wouldn't want a ton of bitterness i mean josh do you remember what the ibus of this uh, beer is i think is? this is around 30 30 or 32 somewhere in there no oh, it's higher than i thought of course it's a well it's a higher gravity it's beer. a bigger it's a bigger beer too though so i think i guess it depends kind of where you're shooting abv wise yeah yeah this was around this is between five and six percent so okay. definitely lower yeah. um and so I, I have saws on my recipe, although I do not currently own any. I could I could go. I do have like a list of the things that I own. I could go with Cascade and Centennial to make it more uh, uh, American and stick with that theme. I think if you're going to boil for 60 or 90 minutes, your bittering hops are probably, you know, it's going to be less consequential what variety you choose there. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. I kind of think it depends, you know, a, a kind of more traditional Saison, it probably doesn't matter a whole lot what yeah. you use. But you can also go, I don't know if it's new school Saison or if it's bastardized Saison or what it is, but 
I've made some some beers over the years with big, you know, big whirlpool additions in a saison that can I mean, you mm-hmm. can you can make some pretty cool flavor combinations with these expressive yeasts and and the new cool hops too. Yeah, like, and I would, how that, I would how that transitions into you know six months down the road when yeah, you that's my worry. Down. I mean, I've heard I've had beers that were that were. I mean, I guess I could also dry hop it later, six months later. Yeah, you could. You know, yeah. um, and the the hop character is going to fade in the barrel yeah. over six months. You yeah, know, with with the bugs. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't. I mean, I have like you know clean bittering like Magnum. Uh, I you know I have four ounces of Cascade. I have some uh, homegrown Comet. Hmm. That I could that I could throw in there for fun and makes it more home, you know, more, US based. More, yeah, yeah, it's in the spirit of the uh, of the corn style. Yeah, so yeah, maybe maybe the comment. Uh, I I use that as a. I mean, I yeah, because I mean, I also have aged hops. Mm-hmm. I have a uh, hops that I uh, some somebody uh, a homebrew shop gave to me that he just said that oh, he's been sitting in my fridge for like a year. <laughs> I was like, all right, and then I just. I uh, got the bags and poked a bunch of holes in it and stuck it in my garage for a year and a half. Mm. Yep. So they smell like uh, Parmesan. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think if, we, if you were just doing a Lambic, I think that that would, it would be a good choice. Yeah. But since you're trying to, to brew a fresh beer uh, yeah. and, you know, and then put that in the barrel, I think you want to you choose something that's fresh and, ta- and smells nice and yeah, let me do the. I'll do the comment. I have a a yeah. bag of it that I that I grew. Yeah, from last yeah. year. I think Perfect. that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then for water profile, I just have it set to balanced. I didn't think. Uh, and I and this is where I think, Josh, did you do any water chemistry additions when you made your saison? I don't remember exactly what I did, but it would have been a fairly balanced. Okay profile for this so not not going one way or the other on any no, no not any. for this one and i can see like you could gyp some of the, like you know i can imagine yeah. this beer being a little sharp you know more of a sharp edge but yep. it kind of depends on what you're looking for but i think a balanced profile is the perfect yeah. place to start yep and i'm I'm doing uh french saison yeast and then i'll i'll ferment uh what my plan is is to do uh is to make 10 gallons of it and ferment all ten gallons in the same vessel mm. with the same with the same pitch. Oh, cool. Okay. And then from there, once that's done, again, I'll bottle those. I'll I'll um, bottle condition, you know, a handful of those to send to you guys, and then I will take the rest, throw it in my basement into two separate carboys. And I have actually, I could tell you because um, I've been sitting on this. <laughs> we, we, come back come back matt come I back feel over <laughs> so i have i have um i have different brett's and different lacto i have uh from i you know i'll start with the the sponsor i have an imperial yeast suburban brett oh yeah so i have that i have uh what sorry y yeast lactobacillus buckner hmm. buckner i five Three three five. I have Omega's Lactobacillus blend called Lacto, and then I have Omega's All the Bretts. <laughs> oh, fun! <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna mix and match and see what gets me what, and I'll yeah. I'll label the the bottles and label the the carboy so I know which strains went into which. But it'll be the same. Um, it's the same French saison ale yeast. Yeah. That sounds like that's fun. cool that it's all out of the the same batch too. So you don't get you know even variations carboy to carboy. Yeah. Right, it'll be from true split. Here. Yeah, yeah. Now wh- one thing we didn't talk about uh, mm-hmm. that Phil Markowski talks about in the book is your mash schedule um, and designing your mash schedule so that you get a a fairly fermentable wort. Ah. So Josh, what was what was your mash schedule in this beer if you it, you know if it turned out so dry? Yeah, so I I fermented the or mashed it probably closer to one forty nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, a bit lower. I think you could even go lower than that if you really wanted to go nuts. But on the other hand, if you're going to throw bugs at it later, right? Maybe you want to keep it higher at like one fifty six or something. 
maybe you, yeah. maybe your your base saison is a little bit sweeter or a little bit you know fuller bodied, but that also gives your bugs more to work with on the back end. So, so that's exactly what I did. Is I had my sack rest at one fifty six, and with the carapils, I'm just I in my and again, I wasn't I ne- I didn't bottle any of this early to drink. I was mm-hmm. mainly just trying to feed the bugs. Yeah. Uh, but if we're trying to drink it, er- I mean, I guess I could go. Sometimes I feel like does the sack rest really matter that much? <laughs> I tend to agree. I mean, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Well, it, well you know, yeah, one, how, how many experiments have the Brulaspi guys done that? I know. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, you know, I'm yeah. sure on some level it matters a small amount. But well, is it yeah. enough? Well, in the, in the book, they say, you know, some, some brewers take an extended uh, mash time with several different levels of, you know, the, several different rest right. stops. So mm-hmm. in that instance, you could say that, you know, if you spend an hour at, pro, at a, you know, 30 minutes of protein rest and then go up to, you know, the lower end of the sacr- sacr- sacrification, uh, re- I've had cold medicine and beer. So if you, <laughs> <laughs> but if you, but if you spend a bit of time at each of those rests, you know, then you can tell that it, you know, it would certainly, um, you know, create a more fermentable profile, whether, you know, mm. whether it's if you do a single temperature rest for 60 minutes at, you know, 148 versus 152, whether you would tell a difference or not, you know, maybe, not, yeah. maybe not so much. But you're yeah. right. If you're designing a beer to be aged uh, and to have some residual sugars that, you know, the bugs are going to be um, eating later on, maybe you compromise on the the dryness of the original beer. Uh, but maybe the yeast will, you know, that you choose for the primary fermentation, maybe yeah, it could dry it out. It might be a little more aggressive. So let's I, I think we should try that because I think it would be interesting to taste a kind of sweet Saison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, cause, and again, I don't think the I don't think the base beer itself is going to be all that mine. You know, like it's going to be pretty basic, I would imagine, because it's being designed for long ter- term storage. Um, it might be cloudy because of the all the wheat that we're throwing in at it. And, you know, uh, one of the other things that I wanted to do and I could do this and and have even more bottles to taste is flavoring some of the later bread at beer with um i i this year i was growing i mean i didn't get to use it but i was growing a lot of lemon balm and lemongrass mm. and lavender and i thought you know some of those flowers or some of those plants might be an interesting addition mm-hmm. for a few bottles for sure yeah you know, just to get to some botanicals in there as well so who knows i could do could throw that at in the mix as well yeah have you have you brewed with lavender before? No. If you go down that road, a little goes a long, a little goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a couple lavender beers, and the first one I think came out just like your grandma's. Soap yeah. Cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I recently bathroom. <laughs> I recently had a homebrewed version, a homebrewed uh, wild ale with lavender and i and i thought before i even had it i'm like oh no this is gonna be overdone and it, and it was awesome it was great mm-hmm. i was like oh this is perfect and yeah. i think i asked i don't remember if i asked him exactly how much he added but it didn't seem like a little and i was like okay maybe just maybe just time maybe <laughs> you yeah. could put some time yeah. in there too uh yeah, you <laughs> put some time in there yeah <laughs> like a whole stew <laughs> well excellent well i think yeah you, i think you've got i think you've got a course uh, and yeah. and hopefully we'll be uh, tasting the first leg of that journey. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm planning on brewing this weekend, so oh, uh, excellent. Yeah. So I guess it would be. I mean, depending on how fast I rip through this. Okay. I mean, I actually I do have a question. So you said you fermented at around close to 80 degrees. Do you think that I should go a little bit warmer, or do you think I should keep it sort of? Like you want it, you want the yeast to get it more expressive. I would imagine. Yeah, that's why I went higher. Higher. I think. Yeah, I think especially. So you're using French saison. What is that like? Thirty-seven eleven, or I guess I don't know what the imperial number for that one is. But any of them, you you probably should ferment a little warmer. I would I think, think. Yeah, I think you definitely can. Uh, this. 
this one doesn't have a number. It's a uh, farmhouse hybrid Saison style yeast. Oh, cool. Yeah. That- I haven't used that yeast yet, but I know, is that a Lalamond one? Yes, it is. Yeah. I've heard super good things about it. So, okay. Yeah, I think you could run that warmer. I mean, in, yeah, my, my... in my past, I've used the the Bell Saison uh-huh. and accidentally left a, a heater on, and I fermented a Saison at like 105 degrees. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was so good. <laughs> wow. Was I, think, I think actually that beer probably, however many years ago that was, that made it on the, the Brewing Disaster show, so... <laughs> Ah, that's where I know you from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I went, to, you know, I I pitched and put it in my in my little heater that you know with the heater and and a cooler to control temperature, and realized the next morning that that beer was up to like 105 and was just <laughs> rocketing. Wow! And I said, well, I don't know. What are you going to do? I just turned it down and it fermented out, and it was. Great. In twelve hours, <laughs> pretty close. Yeah, it was it was motivated. Yeah, so, so we'll yeah. be getting your beer next week. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'll content. get my beer Sun. You'll get my beer on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, excellent, guys. Uh, while I while I'm still upright and can talk, uh, let's. <laughs> I I uh, I still think that the that the Fresca Chandler, it, it, with whether it's a combination of different soft drinks or different beers, I think that there's some room for experimentation. Try, folks out there, try it at home, see what you think, and uh, and you know write us in what your what, what your comments are, and and you know maybe there's something out there. What my goal is to get a, is, my goal is to get a, a beer cocktail on Josh's uh, menu. There at Gambit Brewing, and uh, you know, with the with the name Chandler in it somewhere. Adam Chandler. <laughs> we can make Adam yeah. For science, you know. For science. For science. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, James. Many thanks to Matt and Josh, and I guess apologies for the Fresca thing. I swear that Steve and I liked it a lot, as you'll see on the video show. Uh, Check out Matt's Brew Cabin YouTube channel and sign up for courses on brewcabin.com. And if you have a swimming pool or a hot tub, check out his Swim University channel and site. And if you're in the St. Paul area, go see Josh at Gambit Brewing and definitely try that Saison if it's still available. It was really incredible. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, Write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. And welcome again to new members. Special goodies coming your way. Check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. It's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dodson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. In the meantime, stay well and stay tuned. So long.